The Lord be with you. This is the fourth Sunday of Easter, the 3rd of May, 2020. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. We're going to use the Canticle Jubilati on page 104, page 104 of your prayer book, if that's where you're following on at home, the Jubilati. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his loving mercy is forever, his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. On page 616, 616 of your prayer book, you will find the very well-known psalm, Psalm 23, on page 616. We read together, The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He shall refresh my soul and guide me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. Surely goodness and loving mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 19. For it is to your credit, if being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, where is the credit in that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so 
that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading is to be found in the Gospel according to St. John chapter 10, reading from verse 1. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. But the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. Here ends our second reading. On page 112, 112 of your prayer book, we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and grant her government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him, from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray for the Church of Jesus Christ in all the world. And in particular, we pray for the Church of Ireland. We pray for our new primate, Archbishop John Madol, and we give thanks for his calling as he has taken up office in the past week, we ask God's blessing upon your servant, John. And we pray that you would give him special grace and strength at this time of great challenge in the work of the kingdom within the Church of Ireland. In our prayers today as well, we commit everyone we know and love into God's hands. And we pray for God's blessing, especially upon those who struggle with loss and grief and heartache. 
Almighty and everlasting God, you are strength to those who suffer and comfort to those who grieve. Let the prayers of your children who are in trouble rise to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for wholeness and we ask for those who are ill who are, who are suffering loss and long for your healing touch. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make the weak strong and the sick healthy, the broken whole, and confirm those who serve them as agents of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To everyone in distress, grant mercy, grant relief, grant refreshment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we begin to rebuild, we commend our communities to your care. Give us strength of purpose and concern for others that we may create a community where your will may be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, you watch our ways and weave out of terrible happenings wonders of goodness and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Surround those who have been shaken by tragedy with a sense of your present love and hold them in faith. Though they are lost in grief, may they find you and be comforted through Jesus Christ, who was dead but lives and rules this world with you. Amen. In our Gospel reading we hear words that are now familiar to us. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. Things can very quickly become cliched and I suppose anything I say may be deemed to be a cliché today. But we all know that we've had uh, many of the norms of life stripped away from us. That the things we take for granted uh, are no longer to hand. Uh, the simple task of nipping to the shop for an ice cream, going to fill the car with diesel, going to buy coal or any of those things have become major undertakings which should uh, have a certain amount of reflection before the execution uh, of the task. We have looked around and found that many of the measuring sticks that we use in life have been taken from us. And it's easy for us to despair and it's easy for us to uh, become a little bit lost and we all are a little bit lost in many, many respects. As I speak to you today, as I pre-record this, both Anne and I are missing our granddaughter's sixth birthday uh, because of the circumstances in which we find ourselves. But thanks be to God, we are not missing someone who has been taken from us due to COVID-19. So we have to have proportion. We have to reflect and say, aren't we blessed? despite everything. And I think we look forward and we anticipate a time when there will be a greater sense of normality. We can move around again, we can nip in and out of the shop, we can go and visit people. Uh, and that's right and proper uh, that we should look to that, that the light at the end of the tunnel uh, means that we can anticipate a better time. And having hope before us is very important Although uh, the, the argument that hope at the bottom of Pandora's jar or box uh, may have been the most cruel of things uh, to be there. But yet hope is very, very important to us. Our ability to anticipate forethought is very important. Bertrand Russell said this about Humankind. He said, we are willing to endure present pains for the sake of future pleasures, even if the future pleasures are rather distant. We endure 
present pains for the sake of future pleasures, even if the future pleasures are rather distant. And that's an important principle. He wrote that, I think, in about 1941, during the Second World War. Times were difficult, times were hard, times are difficult, times are hard now. And it may be a longer stretch than we first anticipated, not just uh, being quarantined, but the aftermath. And the uncertainty that goes with that uh, can cause anxiety as well. But we not only live for the future blessing, we not only look for the time when other things are restored to us, but we must understand that we are in the here and now. There might be no future. There might be no uh, dawning day for any one of us. And we must live in the here and now. And know that if God is with us, and he is, if Jesus is our Lord, and he is, if the Holy Spirit dwells within us, and he does, then we have God and his blessing and his love in abundance. I have come that they may, may have life and have it abundantly. That wherever we are, the abundance of God dwells with us. The fullness of the Godhead bodily dwells in my Lord, said St. Paul. And he finishes that thought by saying, and we are complete in him. The fullness of the Godhead bodily dwells in Christ, and we are complete in him. Where do I measure abundance? Where do I measure blessing? Where do I measure my completeness? There are many things, simple things, that I have come to really appreciate in these weeks of uh, isolation. Isolated with, with Anne uh, is not a bad uh, experience at all. But you know what I mean. A dog sitting on your knee. It's just the most lovely thing. Just to sit and stroke your dog's ear while you're watching the TV. Especially if you're watching the news. Just to have your dog come over and snuggle in beside you. It's just lovely. It's so comforting. And there are many simple things in life which are bringing us comfort and ease. To have a garden is a blessing. If you have one, you may not have one, but you may have a whole family circle that you're sharing your love with. You may be utterly isolated. Where is the blessing? Is it somewhere in the future? Yes, it is. And I suppose this is like a prefiguring of life here and the life hereafter. But somebody once said, I don't just want pie in the sky when I die, I want ham where I am. And we have got to realise that the blessing of God, the kingdom of God, is a present experience as well as the thing we look forward to and anticipate. So we don't just look forward to what's out there, but what's in here, what's in here. What is God doing with me now? Is God present in me now? Is he speaking to me? Yes, he is. His love, his grace, his goodness, his mercy, and his abundance is with us. So know that you are in God's presence. And present with God means that you have life and life abundantly. You may be depressed and there's no quick antidote to that. You may be sad and I pray for the alleviation of depression and sadness for you. You may be quite content in what you're experiencing. We are all different but we all have needs and our greatest need is to know companionship and above all the companionship of God Almighty. He has promised that to us in his Son, Jesus Christ, and in his presence with us by his Spirit. And he has come that we might have life and have it abundantly. Let us know the blessing of God today, where we are. Normally speaking, you've been used to Anne sharing worship with me, Sunday by Sunday and at other times as well. Anne isn't well at the moment. She has shingles. 
So I'd ask for your prayers for her and uh, for me as I do a bit of nursing uh, and looking after her. Uh, she will be well, uh, but it's just very unpleasant at the present time. So your prayers and love I know are with us at all times, but uh, keep it up for us at the present time. Un unanticipated, unexpected, we will come through. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always.